Yo. 2012 Escape. Looks like I'll be doing a condenser. This car's obviously been fondled with before. It's missing some stuff. Um, there's a 10 millimeter here for this grill. There's supposed to be two. There should be one here. There should be a screw right here on both sides and it's missing. I don't know what size it is. There's also supposed to be some 10 millimeters here um, and it looks like some of them are busted off. So, I'm going to take this one off anyways. They're just these funky, cheapy little metal looking nuts. Um, and there's, there's little tabs in here that hold this into the bumper. Looks like there's two of these nuts. This one's busted off. If you can see, there's a little lip on the on these little tabs right here. And then this grill comes off. And I got this funky thing here. You just lift up and kind of get out of the way. I have a couple of AC lines here. I made sure all the pressure is out of this system. There's uh, two 13 millimeter nuts for these lines. I'm just going to get these out with a wrench. I should be able to just wiggle this line around and maybe pry on it just a little bit. This line should come off. It's very corroded. I'm probably going to need some new seals because those are ugly. I fish this line through, and if you see this, there's one O-ring right here. And then this O-ring right here. This is a seal, too. So I'm going to try to find replacements for these. Well, I found out why there's some missing bolts in the grill. Somebody already replaced this condenser in 2016. So that didn't last long. I, on the driver's side, I got another plastic thing here I'm gonna just flop out of the way and these are transmission cooler lines I have a drain pan on the floor I'm gonna get these pinch clamps off of these two lines so I think I just have two more 10 millimeter bolts for this Now if you can see right here, there's just two slots in the radiator that this condenser falls down into. I'm going to take a 10 millimeter off of this hood release. I guess I don't need to take it all the way off. I'm just going to loosen it up enough to flop it out of the way. And this should just lift up and come right out. I'm kind of stuck on this hose a little bit here. I just Pulled back on it, comes right out. Now, normally when you're doing a condenser on on a little car like this, you're gonna you're gonna want to add one ounce of refrigerant oil when you replace a condenser, and it had a small leak in it, so I'm gonna add another ounce for a small leak. So I'm gonna add two ounces total into this system. I have some PAG 46 with dye oil. That way if it leaks again, you might be able to find it with a UV light. I'm going to pull these plugs. 
and I got I got two ounces of dye oil. I'm just gonna dump right in here. I put it in the in the hole with the tube too, so it goes down to the bottom. That way it might not leak out when I put this in. In it goes. Put a nut and a washer on there probably to hold this new bolt in. If you really want to torque these, I'd say torque them to about six foot pounds, maybe less. If you're going to reuse these hose clamps, it's always a good idea to try to put them on the same way you took them off. Good luck with that. I got a little magnet that's going to help me out here. I suppose I could have left it on the hose, but whatever. That don't even feel right. It's all loose. It's loose and wrong. I don't like that at all because, um, give it up for China. These hoses are a little small for these, I think. So, I got some hose clamps. I'm going to put extras on here. I'm going to double them up. Seems to be on there fairly good. This clamp's pretty low. I'm going to use a little quarter inch swivel socket for it. There, hopefully the Chinese junk won't leak. Found these at the parts store. They come in a kit for $33, so I just cleaned them up as best as I could. They should work just fine. These are where the real ceiling is anyways. It's on these O-rings. And I got an HBNR O-ring assortment from Harbor Freight, and I just picked out the right pair for that. These are the right size, so I'll put those on. This bottom hose was actually pretty clean, so I didn't have to clean that one up at all. This one was filthy, so I scrubbed all the aluminum oxide off of it as best as I could and put a rat tail file in this hole because it was all messed up. Now I'm going to want to get dye oil all over my finger. I'm going to want to oil these O-rings down really nice. I should actually do the other side of this seal too. And I'll fish these back through the hole. Plug these back in. Oh, I can go from the inside. If I was a guess, I would say to tighten these no more than 16 foot-pounds. I have a manifold gauge set here. High and low side pressure lines are over here. Of course, the blue is the low, the red is the high. Back when I was poor as a church mouse, I used to use this vacuum evac sucker thing that works off a of shop air, works pretty good. Before that, I actually used engine vacuum. Somebody gifted me a pump though, so I get to use this. I just gotta turn on the low side. I'll leave the high side off. And then I'll let this run for 20 minutes. Whenever you open the refrigerant system too, especially when you're replacing parts like the condenser, you're supposed to replace this receiver dryer. That's this big can right here. I don't know, there's a, there's a plug here and a 13 millimeter line and there's some 10 millimeter nuts down there to take it all off. But I'm not doing it. I let the vacuum run for 20 minutes. That's a vacuum I got, so I'm just gonna close both of these off. And I can shut off my pump. 
I'm going to let that sit for another 20 minutes and I'm going to make sure that that, that gauge doesn't go down anymore because if it does I'm going to have a leak and I'm going to have to find it. In the meantime I'm going to toss this grill back on. That cheesy nut you just want to snug it just kind of zero it. It just it's cheesy. And I got some self-drilling screws for in here because because science had an extra 10 millimeter bolt laying around for this. It'd be six by one millimeter threads actually. Looks like it's been sitting about long enough. That needle hasn't moved. I can take this line off of this pump. I got a big tank of 134A I'm going to use. Turn this valve all the way on. Put it on my scale. It's a good enough unit of measure. Zero it out. If you really want to get anal about things, you can open this line up until it starts squirting juice all over. There, I bled all the air out of it, which is about none, so it really doesn't matter. It says right here this buggy takes uh, 1.56 pounds, so a pound and a half, and five ounces of oil. So I'm just going to open this up, the cold side, until I get to a pound and a half. So it'll be one pound eight ounces. I have one pound nine ounces, which should be good. If you're using them little cans, it'll go on the low side, and it might not take without running the car. You want to put as much in the system as you can and start the car and get the AC compressor to kick on, and then it'll suck it in the cold side, because the cold side usually runs about 30 PSI of pressure. Now I'm just going to start the thing up and turn the AC on max AC and high and see what the system pressures are at. And the cheesy Ford compressor sounds like a bad case of constipation. But it appears to be working. 30 pounds and 230 on the high side. 97 degrees. 32% humidity. So that ain't so bad. My AC fans are running, 32 degrees, 31 degrees, well that must be a lie because everything would be freezing in here. No, I just got to let my garage get blistering hot for a little while and get this transmission up to operating temperature and check the tranny fluid. The stick says it calls for Mercon LV. I'll make sure that's up to snuff and I'm going to call it a job. Okay, bye.